today is Labor Day. I originally scheduled the day off for myself, but you know what? What's going on in the country is just too important for me to sit by the pool. Here's a podcast. It's a very unusual podcast, not the type I do, but this podcast is going to be directed toward you. It is time for you to become a beacon of information, not just a sharer of information, but you have to become your no, your own news outlet. I am going to teach you today the first steps in becoming the next great walk and talk person or sit and talk person that your friends watch on Facebook. This is how we solve the number one problem in this country, which is people not being informed with the truth. Why aren't the people in Washington putting themselves in harm's way? Why aren't they walking the walk as well as talking the talk? They're position in Washington is to do the will of the people. I don't see anybody in Washington doing the will of the people anymore. The only one who really puts his money where his mouth is, is Dennis Michael Lynch. Hello, I am DML and you are listening to the Dennis Michael Lynch podcast. The exclusive sponsor of this program is DMLCBD.com. Go there today and get the best CBD products that can make you feel great again. This podcast is for independent thinkers who want to recapture the great American experience, and they know it all starts with sharing the unfiltered facts, truth, and opinions I give you every day. Today's podcast will both shine a light on the solutions that can fix our nation's biggest problems, and it will make you the smartest person in the room. Here we go. Typically, if you listen to my podcasts, Either I'm doing one of those eye-popping, eye-opening interviews with somebody who's just so knowledgeable and giving you the truth, or I am doing my analysis of the different news stories of the day. For this Labor Day, I'm going to teach you something. I'm going to teach you how to do something which I think is going to ultimately help us get the truth out to the masses, because that's the number one problem in the country. The number one problem in the country is media, media and social media. The American people are not being informed correctly, and that's because there are tremendous stop gaps in place. And these stop gaps, these stop gaps are designed to stop people like me, influencers, people with blue check marks from getting the message out to the masses. And that's why we need to do this differently. Think about it. Think about coronavirus alone. Think about how many doctors came out with a differing opinion than that of the CDC and Anthony Fauci Fukifaki, who you know I change his name every day because he always changes his tune. The American people are being force-fed a narrative that has no opposite side. Think about your own health and health decisions. For your entire life, you have been taught, get a second opinion, get a third opinion. That's common sense. That is one of the principal foundations of the health system, that you can go and get multiple opinions and then you can take the data, you can take the information, you can take the reports and what it is that you see on scans, and you can make an educated decision on what is best for you. But that has been eliminated now. We no longer have second, third, and fourth opinions because those opinions are censored. They're crushed. And if the masses do start to hear about those opinions, let's take Mike Lindell from my pillow and all the evidence and all the arguments that he has about what happened in this election, he winds up getting destroyed by the media. They will take that one man who has put millions of dollars and thousands of hours in trying to prove, or at least if nothing else, get people to pay attention to election integrity and lack thereof. So what do they do? Because he has such a big microphone, they start to omit him. They start to damage him. They start to chop down on that one man. So that one man who may be messaging out to 30 million people, he gets chopped down. And then therefore, those other 30 million people, they don't get the message anymore. We're doing it incorrectly. And it has come to me over the last couple of days. We are doing it all wrong. And today's podcast is about teaching you how it is that we flip the script. And I think I've got, I think I got the magic sauce here. So let me lay a few things out for you. And I want you to pay attention to this. And if this is not for you, well, then I need you to share it with somebody else who it is for them. But it should be for you. This should be something that you're willing to do. Let me step back and explain a few things 
that may support what I'm coming to say to you today in, in, in the sense that you need to start to become your own beacon of getting the information out there. And I mean more than just sharing things to your timeline. So listen to this, and I'll go through this as quickly as I possibly can. Years ago, 10, 12 years ago, I started my career in the news business on a whim. I had absolutely no intentions on being a reporter, a journalist, a commentator, a host of a TV show, TV news show. That was not what I designed for my life at all. So I fell into it. So in the same way I fell into it, you can fall into being a spreader of real news. So I found myself on Fox News because one of my neighbors, Brian Kilmeade of Fox and Friends, saw that what I was doing with video down at the southern border was worthy of broadcasting on Fox News. And that's how it started. Once I got on there, I learned everything I needed to learn to be a powerful beacon of truth on Fox News. Now, I'm going to give you an example of something, and I'm going to tie it back to Facebook. I used to appear on Fox News, I would say, an average of once a week, maybe once every 10 days. But I'd always be on the biggest shows. So in the morning, I was on Fox News, and I was they always put me in the top hour. And then I was on The Kelly File. And if I wasn't on The Kelly File, you'd see me once in a while on O'Reilly. Hannity had an hour with me, whatever. Most of my appearances were either on Fox and Friends in the best hour of the morning and, of course, on The Kelly File, consistently all the time. So my coverage across America was perfect. I was getting them in the morning and I was getting them in the night. With that being said, Facebook at the time, I had about 100,000 people following my page following my page on Facebook, and basically that was coming because of my appearances on Fox News. Megyn Kelly, Megyn Kelly, when she first started her show, The Kelly File, on the very first night, a Monday, she had on her first guest ever was Senator Ted Cruz. Now at the time, Senator Ted Cruz was one of the biggest names in the country because he was going head to head with Barack Obama during the Obamacare debacle. You may recall the government shutdown. So she had him on. Her ratings, over 3 million people for the night, if I remember this correctly. On the second night, her ratings blew past that. Her ratings were so freaking huge that MSNBC said there's no way that this can be correct. So they called upon the Nielsen's to do an audit because on Wednesday, the number one guest that Megan had, the big name that she had, was Senator Rand Paul, and the numbers went back to about 3 million. So what took place on that Tuesday that was just so earth-shattering? I'll tell you what it was. Yours truly. I was her main guest. Now, the reason why those numbers popped up is because I used Facebook to promote that I was going to be on. I used Facebook, and I said, I'm going to be on tonight. You're going to see great footage from down in Washington, D.C. They're keeping veterans, the greatest generation, away from seeing the monuments, closing them out. But meanwhile, on the other side, on the mall, the great, great lawn, we've got thousands of illegal aliens allowed to protest. Everybody weighed in. Everybody came in. Everybody checked in. Megyn Kelly told me the next day that whenever I wanted to be on, I was invited on her show. So think about how I did that. I used Facebook, which is far left leaning. I used Facebook to promote my appearance on Megan, and people who wouldn't usually watch Megan tuned in that night by huge numbers. Point, there's power in Facebook if you use it correctly. But even still, I had 100,000 likes on Facebook at that time. I left Fox News eventually, went over to Newsmax. I had the number one television show on Newsmax from January to August 9th, 2016. Every single night, I was the number one show that was never a close number two. That whole time, I was fighting for Trump. Now, Newsmax at the time had about a million followers on Facebook. So my profile shot up very quickly because not only was I posting my clips from my show on my page with my 100,000 users, but Newsmax was also putting me out there. So I went from 100,000 to a quarter million people following me on Facebook. So get that, 
Get that knowledge on a piece of paper in front of you. Write it down. Fox News, biggest station there is, right, in terms of cable news. I'm And, and I'm on the biggest shows. I get 100,000. Newsmax, up and coming, a million people on Facebook, sharing my videos every single night. I go to 250. But when I left Newsmax, and by the way, if you don't know why, this is important. The CEO and founder of Newsmax, Chris Ruddy, is a million dollar donor to the Clinton Foundation. Okay? And this is a perfect example of why you need to start to be a beacon of news. When I found out that Chris Ruddy had given a million dollar donation to the Clinton Foundation, everything suddenly made sense. See, back in those days, I could do whatever I wanted at Newsmax because I was the Tucker Carlson of the network at the time. So I was pampered. I didn't have to go to certain meetings. I didn't have to uh, uh, follow the script that other people do. Damn it, I didn't even have to read commercials. I said I wouldn't read the commercials. They used to have the hosts read the commercials. I said, I'm not reading anything that I don't use, and I don't use any of the stuff you're asking me to read. I am not doing the commercials. So they didn't give me a hard time because I was the number one guy. It wasn't until I looked to change the show format that I had, which was basically fighting for Trump. That was the whole thing. I was fighting for Trump every single night on my show. I wanted to flip it. I wanted to change for September and October leading up to the election. I wanted to change that to making the argument against Hillary. That's when I wound up getting a letter from the management team saying that I no longer could dictate what it was that my show topics were about. That didn't make any sense to me. It also didn't make any sense to me that the only times, two times, in eight months that I was told no, despite being the star there, was when I wanted to have on two different writers who wrote negative books about the Clintons. They would not allow me to have them on. They said in writing, there's no reason to look back on Hillary Clinton stories. Nobody cares. Wait a second. One of the people who wrote the book was on the Secret Service detail for the Clintons. What do you mean they don't care? Obviously, there was something deeper going on, at least in my opinion anyway. And so I wound up leaving Newsmax. They unplugged me in the middle of a live show because I would not, as far as I was concerned, I would not follow their lead and I would not bury the information that needed to be put out against Hillary Clinton. When I left Newsmax, August 10th, August 11th, I had a quarter million people following me on Facebook. At that given time, I really had nowhere left to go. I wasn't going to go back to Fox News, and I certainly wasn't going to be going back to Newsmax. How do I keep my presence? How do I keep informing people about what's going on? I decided to pick up my phone and start doing walk and talk videos. I just came up with it. Go around my neighborhood, talk into my phone, short videos, three minutes, seven minutes, eight minutes, 10 minutes, five minutes, and just give the facts. Just give opinions that could be shared. Give insights that give people another perspective. And I did it every single day, and my videos went viral. In fact, over the course of three months, if I remember correctly, it was over 100 million video plays and over 1 million shares of my walk and talk videos. And by the time that the election was over and Trump had become president, I had 1.3 million people following me on Facebook. Think about that. All the years on Fox, almost the whole year on Newsmax, all that exposure, every single night, I got to a quarter million. But then all of a sudden, I went to 1.3 million in a matter of months simply by doing walk and talks. Do you know why that is? Here's why. Because every Tom, Dick, and Harry, female or male, can get a suit and tie or can get a fancy dress, read off a teleprompter, and give you the news that they want you to have. But I just explained to you how it is that certain information could be omitted, left out, edited to fit a narrative. Look at Fox News and what they did with the 2020 election in announcing Arizona so breathtakingly early. Who does that? I'll tell you who does that. Somebody who's working with the Republican Party to make sure that Trump doesn't have a second chance. And if you don't think that's happening, you don't understand the inner workings of Fox News. You don't understand the inner workings of the swamp. Think about that. I can't tell you how many times being in these newsrooms, 
you learn about what goes up and what doesn't go up. Think about the border right now. The border right now is an open sieve. We've got 200,000 people, give or take 20, 30, 40,000 on either side coming through the border as we know it every single month. It's been like this since Biden took office. And yet, when you turn on the television today, ABC News, CBS Evening News, uh, whatever it is, proud as a peacock, NBC, you're not going to hear anything about the border. And if they do touch the border, it's going to be for 15 seconds. If they do touch it, it's going to be about the humanitarian crisis that's down there with all the little kitties coming across. They will never, ever give you the real stories. They don't talk about MS-13. They don't talk about sex trafficking. They don't talk about drug trafficking. They don't talk about how these people are coming through with unbelievable diseases, some of them that are actually marked as unknown because doctors have never seen them before. This is information I get straight from the Border Patrol themselves. But that stuff is never informed to the American people because it never makes it on there. It's omitted. It's, 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 it's erased out. So the majority of people in this country don't know that that many people are flowing through the border. And if they do, they just think it's nice families who are just looking for a better life and want to pick lettuce. It's just not the way it works. And the problem here, and I go back to what I said, the number one problem in this country is that the people of this country are not being informed correctly. And so when I come at it, with credible information, walking through the streets, when I can relate to the person on the other side. Because see, the person in the teleprompter, the person in the newsroom that's pampered with makeup and pampered with talking points written by somebody else, that they're either too, you know, they're either so good looking or so articulate that they've gotten themselves a hosting job, it's all fake. Even if it's real, it's delivered through a fake means of fake makeup. So here and, and, and time frames and things written off a teleprompter. So now you got Dennis Michael Lynch walking the streets with his cell phone, showing you his dog, showing you the garbage can, saying hi to his neighbors as he goes by, but giving you real good information that you can share. That's why I went viral. That's why I continue to go viral today. I may not do a Facebook Live for three months. I go on, I get 5,000 people. Now, that may not sound a lot compared to Fox News, but if Facebook were to actually alert every one of my 1.3 million, I would have 1.3 million watching me, and they'd all be sharing it, and you know it. But the way that Facebook works between its algorithms and the fact that if you have that many people on a streaming, that they probably collapse. So that's how, why it's so important that you share it. I'm going to take this now that I've explained this to you, and I'm going to bring it to another level to where it's all about you. Over the last couple of days since we upgraded our DML News app and we made a conscious effort here to stay focused on nothing else other than educating the American people so this way they can make informed decisions, so this way they can trust the news they get. See, we just don't give you the three paragraphs of what's going on somewhere else and stop. We give you extra videos, we give you extra commentary, we give you extra tweets, everything that will make that story, that news article, we give you more credible, something that you know you can sink your teeth into, something you know that you can share, or better yet, repeat without having to worry about getting nailed for fake news. We never ever get nailed for fake news. One time within the last couple of years, Facebook marked us as giving misleading information from a third party fact checker about a story that came out of Breitbart about driver's licenses being given to illegal aliens in the state of New York and that these people would be able to be uh, put on the voter roll. And they hit us as being misleading. It wasn't misleading. In fact, I was so angered about it, I contacted my lawyer. My lawyer contacted Facebook. Facebook put my, my lawyer in touch with the fact checker company. We reached out to the fact checker company and they took off what it is that they put on. We were incorrectly tagged for putting out misleading information. Aside from that, we never get nailed for anything because we put out the real stuff. So now my app, out of nowhere, is now number 14 on the Apple app news chart. 14 is almost even misleading because number one is Twitter. Number two is Reddit in terms of apps. Number three is uh, Neighborhood Watch. Those really aren't news apps. If you go through all that kind of nonsense and you really get to, hey, give me news outlets, the number one news outlet on a download of apps is Fox News. They are number one in terms of real news outlets, but if you put them on the chart, they're, they're still, they're number, if I'm not mistaken, number 10. Next is CNN at number 11. 
Next is New York Times at number 12. 13 is AOL. And then I'm number 14. So if you, you get out all that other nonsense, you have got Fox News number one, CNN number two, New York Times number three, and me number four. Why is that? Because people have finally recognized that they're tired of getting lied to by these other places and that they can rely on us. And I want that to translate to they can rely on you. Because like I said about Mike Lindell, all they have to do is chop my legs out. And then there's one guy spreading all the news on Facebook. We're going to be smarter than that. First of all, with everybody downloading the DML News app, we don't need Facebook anymore. Secondly, if we are going to use Facebook, we're going to use Facebook at our benefit, at your benefit. We're going to use them to get our message out, your message out, my message out with the truth to people. And if people choose to ignore it, well, then there's nothing we could do. But if people choose to hear it because it's finally getting to them, they're finally getting the real information about the border, about Afghanistan, about health care, about election fraud, about infrastructure, about anything and everything that's going on in this country, we give it to them true. Something as simple as what I talked about this morning on my Facebook Live, I talked about videos of the different football stadiums across the country, these football stadiums packed with maskless young people chanting at the top of their lungs, F-U-C-K, Joe Biden. So I'll use duck instead of the bad word. Duck Joe Biden. (laughs) Duck Joe Biden. (laughs) That message was heard around the country. But you won't find it on ABC News. You won't find it on CNN. The powerful part of this is this. That is news. Because it's showing that the millennials of this country have had it with the liberals. They've had it with the lying of the Joe Biden administration. They've had it. They've had it with the lies of the CDC. They are tired of it. And they're saying, duck Joe Biden, boom, 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 boom. That means the momentum is going in the other direction, in our direction, the direction of people who are saying on the top of their lungs, you can't trust these people. You can't vote for those people. That's the power. That is the power. And that's the power that I'm going to teach you on what to do now. You are going to become a walk and talk of your own. And this is how you do it. Number one, you have to establish credibility immediately. So if you grab your cell phone or your iPad and you're going to do a Facebook Live, you have to put in a title that will have credibility and at the same time open the eyes of the reader. So for example, let's assume, and we're going to use a report that came out of the University of Waterloo. Let's assume that you wanted to focus in on masks really don't work. All right. You would start off with a title that says, new research report out of university claims masks don't work, period. All right. You caught people's attention with that. That's number one. Now I'm talking about doing a Facebook Live. So when you go to do a Facebook Live, typically what will happen is you get up on your app, your Facebook app, and it will say post something. And you just got to look for the live button. And when you hit the live button, you'll see that your camera right away on your phone is going to look at you. You've got to give Facebook the ability to have access to your microphone and to your camera. And it's okay. You can do it. And then after you don't your Facebook Live, you can turn it off again if, if you're uncomfortable with leaving it on constantly. So what happens is now you got it. You put your title in and you're looking at it. It's waiting for you to go to live. That now says stage number two. So you've got your title up there and now you're basically going to talk into your phone and you're going to be nervous at first, especially if you've never done television or radio, you're going to be nervous and you're going to look to fill in the uh, empty spaces with commentary that really in most cases won't matter. Eventually you could start to add in some entertainment like I do, or when I walk around my streets, I I go longer because I'm, I'm, I'm a wealth of information because I have a news business, but to start off. So this way you could build your audience. You've got to keep it short. And you always have to ask opinions. You've got to ask questions. You have to create a question. That's really what it is. 
So here's the example. You will start off your video. Hey, Susan here. Hey, Bill here. I'm asking you right now to share this video. You want to ask them at the front to share the video because that says I'm going to give you something important that needs to be shared. Do not forget at the beginning to ask that they share the video. It's got two purposes to it. One, hey, there's something really important coming your way. And two, you're telling them to take an action. And that's important. You need the video to be shared. Number three. Okay. I don't know if you use the DML News app or not. I use the DML News app. It's at the top of the charts on Apple. Never have these people ever been hit for fake news. It's the real news that you need to know. So that's the DML News app. So now what you've done is you established credibility that this isn't just something you pulled out of thin air. This isn't something you pulled from some conspiracy website. They hear, oh, top of the charts. Let me see what that's all about. And maybe they'll turn around and download it. It works well for everybody. If not, even if they don't download it, at least you're establishing credibility. That's the, net, that's the part there. So, so far you've got, you need a catchy short title. Number two is you're asking them to share. And number three is you're preluding what you're about to speak with. Hey, I got this from the DML News app, which is a ranked at the top of the Apple uh, downloads for news apps. And they've never been hit for fake news or anything of that nature. So you know you could trust it. All right, we've established everything. Then you go into this. There's a study out of the University of Waterloo that was just posted to the DML News app, and it's all over the place. It's going viral now. Masks don't work. They only offer, in this one study, a 10% efficacy rate in keeping aerosol from getting out or from getting in. So in other words, if you have a mask on and you've got COVID and 90% of it is going to get outside that mask. So it defeats the purpose. And if you're somebody trying not to get COVID and you're around somebody else and you're wearing a mask, only 10% chance that you're going to block it from coming in. So my question is, and that's the big thing, my question is, if this study is what it is, why are we forcing children to wear masks in school? Why are we forcing Americans to wear masks if they don't work? It doesn't make any sense to me. Does it make sense to you? If you agree with me, please share this video. Thank you very much. That's it. You put it in a form of a question. If you put it in a form of a question, you make somebody else think to themselves. Now all of a sudden they're going to start going to the DML News app. They're going to read more about that University of Waterloo study. Or even if they don't use the DML News app, they'll go to Google and they'll Google a University of Waterloo study and they'll be able to see the whole thing for themselves. You simply ask them to ask a question of themselves, and that's how it goes. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, the best way to do this is you get the article on the DML News app that attracts you the most. Now, personally, I think you should do it maybe another way at the beginning, and we're going to assist you in this. Every single day, my team is going to put out a post on the DML News app. If you're an app user, you'll get it. And it's going to be, it's going to be a new thing now, suggested Facebook live video. We will take a script for you and we will put it in there. You can print it out or you can keep it up on your screen, on your computer, and you can read right from that script. So this way you don't leave anything out. You don't say anything incorrectly. We give you the script. If you don't want to do a Facebook live, well, then what you could do is you could copy and paste that script and you can put it right into your live status. So if you're not one of those people, oh, I don't like the way I look on camera, I don't like the way I sound, that's crazy, in my opinion. The more real you are, the more impactful it's gonna be, but let's assume you're just not gonna go down that direction. You at least take what we give you and post it into your timeline, to your feed, into your status update, word for word the way we have it for you. We're gonna have that every single day. And so here's the point. If you are all doing videos, and keep in mind, it's going to take, I gave you the whole explanation. I had 100,000 people, I was on Fox. 250,000 people, I was on Newsmax. 1.3 million people because I'm walking around the streets like a normal dude. So if you really want to get the message out, if you really want to do your part in getting people informed, because that is the number one problem in our country, the more people who know what's going on, the more people are going to push back. You know how you get these mask mandates to stop? I'll give you an example. 
There's a private school here in Florida, which is demanding that all children wear masks. Well, there's a lot of parents that are unhappy about it, but they don't know how to form together. If you were to take, let's say for instance, there's 500 families in the school. If you were to take an effort and go to those families and say, hey, you know, if we go in numbers and we present real studies, we present real questions, if where's 100 families or 200 families and the tuition at this place is 20 grand a year, you're talking about $2 million at risk if they don't listen to you. The power comes in numbers. If it's just one person going to the school, they'll eliminate that person. They'll kick them out. They won't give them the time of day. They won't put their message out. They'll discredit them, whatever. But when you put it in numbers, it's a different story. And that's why this is the way to go about it. If you want people to truly be informed, you have to understand that when you first make your first bunch of videos, they're not going to respond to it. They're not going to share it maybe as much as you want to. You're going to get discouraged. But if you quit after a week, if you don't go through the processes as, as I'm teaching you here, you will ultimately fail. Don't be a nickel, nickel rocket. Be somebody who goes out and makes change. I am telling you, I have built so much of my businesses, my success, not just the messaging. I helped President Trump get into that victory. I have the emails. I have the letters from thousands of people that prove it. You know, I know what I'm talking about here. You know the Black Sisters, Diamond and Silk. I found them. I found them on YouTube. I brought them in. I gave them their names, Diamond and Silk. I gave them the routine that you watch all the time. One video it took, and changing their name, changing their style, explaining how it is to get through that cell phone, how to get through the camera and get into somebody's, into somebody's mind and somebody's heart. One video it took me to do with them. I put that up on the internet. It went viral. President Trump, who was then candidate Trump, wound up calling the girls and the rest of its history. So trust me when I tell you I know how to do this. Will you be the next star? I have no idea. That's not the point here. If you turn out to be a star, God bless you. But the point here is to get more people educated. Now think about this for a second. If we took that Waterloo, we took that Waterloo message and we had a thousand people making their own walk and talk video. Even if they were to try to chop my legs out, they're not going to get the 999 rest of you. Think about how many people are going to share the video, how many people are going to see the video, how many people are going to start to look up. You have to own the narrative. We have to own the messaging. And for those of you who won't do the live videos, imagine all the people that you're reaching when you paste it into your timeline. This is the way to win the game. This is the way that we get the real news out to people because we become the news. So yes, I want you to continue to share everything I put up there for you, but I also want you to become a beacon. You need to become your own microphone. You need to become your own news outlet. You have to keep it credible. You have to give the facts. You've got to keep it short and tight until you wind up creating such a loyal audience that you can decide to go 30, 40 minutes if you want, just like I do. It takes time to build. Some of you will be more successful than others, but at least you know you gave it the chance. People ask me all the time, what can we do? I am giving you the secret sauce right now. If you really want to see change for you, your family, your country, your neighbors, your coworkers, this is one of the steps you can take. You don't think it's effective? Ask yourself this. How did you learn about my app? How did you learn about my podcast? Enough said. And as far as the podcast goes, as of this morning, we're number 30. You understand? We have moved from 75 to 30 in a matter of two weeks because we have put so much effort into our podcasts. You know, yesterday I answered emails. Today I'm doing this. These two podcasts that you're listening to are not the normal. You know that. Tomorrow, I have an interview with Ammon Bundy about the Constitution, about unfair imprisonment, how it's just the kind of things that blow your mind about what's going on in this country. And now he's running for governor of Idaho. We're going to have him on. All week long, my guests, my commentary about the news, it makes you the smartest person in the room and it is now going to be designed to make you a beacon of information. So, in closing, make sure you download the DML News app if you don't have it already. You tell people about the DML News app. You tell people about the DML podcast. And remember, every single day going forward, 
we are going to give you that one message, the one unifying message that all DML app users and Team DML use to get out the word. They can't stop us all from putting out the messaging. They cannot. That's the way you win the game using their own platforms, Twitter and Facebook, using their platforms against them. That's what I have to say for today. I hope you share it. I hope you'll be with me on this journey. Starting tomorrow, Tuesday, September 7, we will begin putting out that message you share. I also want you to forward me to wetrustdml at gmail.com. That's wetrustdml at gmail.com. Forward me your Facebook video. Send us the link so this way we can see what you're doing and we will post it. We'll start making postings on the DML News app using what you're doing as an example. In fact, a couple of my top team DML members, I'm going to talk to them today about them putting out a couple of videos so this way we could use it as an example for tomorrow. We're going to get this done. We're going to get this done in a grassroots way. I trust you. You trust me. America is worth defending. There's also one other task I want you to take. This is a very important part of helping you starting the process of going viral. We have a group page on Facebook. It's called the Official Team DML Group. You don't have to be a paying member of the TeamDML.com website. It's a free group on Facebook. You can apply to get in. We'll approve you. It might take a couple of days. People that are on there are of like mind. So let's say, for instance, there's you, and we'll say your name is Bill. And then there is somebody else on that page, and we've got 26,000 people who are part of that group. Let's say somebody else on there is Susan. Bill is going to make his video, and Susan is going to make hers. And although they're going to be sort of the same video, they're going to be different in the sense that Bill and Susan aren't the same person. Bill and Sue are going to become friends. And what's going to happen is when Bill creates his video, Susan is going to share it to her timeline. And then when Susan makes her video, Bill is going to share it to his timeline. And think about what that's done. Now Bill has two videos that are matching each other, if you will, about the same sort of messaging on his page. So it's a double impact. And the same goes for Susan. Not only that, you start getting the share content going up. And this is the way that you build what goes on viral. What I'm giving you right now is a trick that every news agency out there, with the exception of me, I do not do it. What they do is they do cross sharings. So a lot of times you'll see that one page will be sharing news from a different page. And if you went to that page, you'll see that they would share it vice versa. I remember going back a while ago, the Washington Free Beacon called me up and said, hey, uh, we'd like to start doing some link sharing with you. And I did it for about a week. And I think the, the, the Washington Free Beacon is, is a good place and we aggregate their news. But ultimately I said, you know what? I, I don't need to do that. I'm just gonna stick strictly to DML stuff. But that was a business decision. For you, it has nothing to do with business decision. For you, it has to do with messaging. And that is the one way that you can get your videos out even quicker. So you go in to the team, official Team DML Facebook group you join, and then you start to discuss with the other people who say they're going to be making their videos. And you'll see, we'll, we'll put groups up, we'll put conversations and posts up about this. And then you just start to team up. And as you start to all share each other's videos, guess what starts to happen? You all start to go viral. The truth needs to be out. And if people still feel that they need to vote for Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, or any of these radical Democrats after they get the truth, well, then we've got a problem so big that I don't know how to solve that one. But I don't think it's the case. I don't think it's the case. The more people who know information, the more that they'll stand up for America, our rights, and what is supposed to be the greatest nation on earth. We're not there now. We gotta get it back. That's it for me. Until tomorrow, may God bless you, our troops, your family, these United States, and every new member of the Walk and Talk community. You're gonna be a star one way or another. If nothing else, you're a star for trying to get out the news to as many people as you can. We need more leaders and less followers. 
This podcast is produced by Anita Griffey, Lori McLean, and yours truly. And you could subscribe by going to the Apple Podcasts page and search for Dennis Michael Lynch Podcasts. And make sure to leave us a five-star review. Or you can download the DML News app from the Google Play Store for Android phones and the Apple App Store for iPhones. And do not forget to visit our sponsor, DMLCBD.com, so this way you can feel great again.